and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! What is the issue with that one? She happens to be somewhat rather cross with our YouTube viewers. And what might it be this time? I showed her the recent stats from our YouTube channel. It appears that only 8% of our viewers have actually subscribed to the channel. So she's serving those unsubscribed viewers with the silent treatment until they wisen up and subscribe. She gives all your viewers the silent treatment. True, but today she's added a fair amount of self-righteous indignation and scorn to the process. She'll get past it in seven or eight minutes, as she typically does. In any case, welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. You've met my butler, Mr. Livingston, and the angry scowl to this side, who is typically a quietly demure mouse in the household, would be my coyly quiet and grave-digging charge, Tangella. And tonight we have a most decapodedly crustiastic program in store just for you. Livingston, did you know that humans consume over one and a half million metric tons of crab each and every year? Not surprising. You yourself can account for one of those metric tons. Says the man with the German accent who subsists upon a continuous diet of Hofer Schwab served over Grunkohl and covered with a large dollop of schmaltz. Back to my diatribe. My purpose with invoking statistics about that wonderful and delicious sea spider we call the crab is because tonight we shall present Attack of the Crab Monsters from 1957. This is a rather very brilliant Roger Corman film about a group of scientists marooned upon an island with a herd of giant murderous crabs. You'll learn tonight that the professor's first gig on a deserted isle was not with Gilligan and the Skipper too but with Pamela Duncan, Richard Garland, and some bloke appropriately named Beach Dickerson, who portrays Seaman Fellows. As we watch that, we'll be joined by our friend, neighbor, and Bodega Bay denizen, Mr. John Provost. You remember John as Timmy on Lassie, but many of you will know him best as Tangella's favorite target when citing her trebuchet. He'll tell us what he has been up to as of late, Chime in about tonight's film, and hopefully avoid the wrath of Tangella's most foul mood. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of giant monster fright, right here on Creature Features! <laughs> Stay tuned. Welcome back. Da, 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 da. You remember that show? Welcome back, Carter. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it should be John's theme song because he's back. I'm back. Welcome back, I, John know, Provost. I don't, I don't live that far away. I know, just but down the it's hill. It's the first time you've been in this chair since, since some it's, time, right? It's been a while. Right, right, well, right. Welcome to Creature Features. Thank you for joining us. We're with John Provost. If you don't know John Provost, then I don't know what to say because it obviously means they have not watched this program. Obviously means they've never watched Lassie. Gotta be dog lovers. Nor the computer wore tennis shoes. Nor Star Wars, because you played 
You played something in Star Wars too, right? No, that was another guy. Mm. Yeah. You would have been good in Star Wars. What character would you play? Well, I don't know about Star Wars, but I am a robot in a new movie that's coming out. That's right. You do the voice. Yes. Yes. No, I'm no, no, no but I mean you physically. Right. Your voice is great in the robot. Physically. We discussed that last time. But physically, what character would you be in Star Wars? Oh, could I be an Ewok? Well, I wasn't going to go there, but well, I'm, you know, I know, I, mean, I know you're not the tallest <laughs> bloke know. in the world, but I, no. I couldn't be, you know, Han Solo. How about Darth Vader's son? Oh, right. That would work. Right. I mean, yeah, we're about, yeah. that would work. I could do that. We're getting silly. Anyways, welcome to the show. We're going to watch Attack of the Crab Monsters. Sounds like a plan. With John Provost. John Provost knows a thing or two about crab monsters because you were on Lassie for how many years? Seven years, and this movie was made the year that I started Lassie. So we, we, we planned yeah. that, you know. Oh, well, good. Well, no. good. And, and that's no. probably why it's I didn't see it. It's a coincidence. Okay. It, it's like these clocks. All the clocks in this, in this manor stop at 1031 for some reason. I cannot get mm. a functional clock in this household. I have to get one of those digital ones for my battery. That'll work. Oh, and just, then you just need a battery. You don't have to have somebody to wind them all. Right. No, winding. We yes. have three clocks in our house that we have to wind. I have to wind. Once a week. Yeah. Once a week. Yeah. Wow. Every Sunday. That's the deal. Once a week, every Traditionally. Sunday. Traditionally. Yeah. No, that is that's rather nice. All right. So you've seen this film. Yes. And you like it. And I, I've not seen any bit of this film whatsoever. I saw one shot of the professor. And it's the same professor. It's, I swear, I think this movie was the pilot for Gilligan's Island. I think it was his audition tape. There you go. It is real. It was his real. Oh, there yeah, you go. No. But, you know, from what I saw, he seems to be a bit of a more bitter bloke. Right? Mm, younger. No, He's definitely younger. The professor on Gilligan's Island was enthusiastic. And this, this, yeah. this guy, he seems like he's... Not too happy well, about being, his... Well, he's being chased by giant crabs. No, no, no. I don't mean the part where he's being attacked by spiders. I mean, uh, just just before, he seems like a bit of bloke. He does not like his lot in life. Well, I think he's waiting to get on Gilligan's Island. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. He, he knew he would get a better part. He just had to get, get through this one with Roger Corman. With Roger Corman. Get, right. Yeah, no, let's, that makes let's sense. Get, that makes yeah. sense. All right. What do you say we start this film? Sounds like a plan. All right, here we go to see uh, Russell Johnson and a bunch of other people in Attack of the Crab Monsters, 1957. Don't you dare go away because we're going to miss you, right? Yes. All right, see you soon. Hello YouTube viewers, have you subscribed yet? I see a few of you have forgotten to do so. I am somewhat disappointed. Please subscribe. Thank you. You know, back in 1957, you did not see a lot of heads removed of, of crewmen. No, in films. you didn't. You know, it looks like one of Tangela's former suitors. I mean, maybe with the head, he, he doesn't, but without the head. He without like, without oh. the head. Right. Definitely. No, no. Definitely. She's, she has a, a fine collection of heads. We don't know what she does with the body. Yeah. We, we imagine she donates it to science or something. Because, you know, most of the time, science does not need the head, right? They want the other parts. They want, yes, exactly, right. the it's body like, parts. What are you going to do with a face and a brain that doesn't work anymore? Right. I think they made a movie like that. Oh. With the, the, they kept the guy's right. head alive. Yeah, no, that was, right. Mm. right. There's a few of those. Maybe that was his head. You know. Anyways, you know, we've got many new viewers who don't know who in God's name you are. So we should probably explain it fully, right? Okay. I did mention that this movie was made in 1957, right. and that was the year that I started Lassie, the TV series, which and I And you did not portray Lassie. No, we had a dog for that. Right, that's what you I, need I for was that role. I was the dog's mate, you know, friend. Oh. Yeah, friend. I would not use and the word mate. 
I mean, I know we well, do this in the UK, yeah, but you know, the I learned not to ma- use you know, that okay. word here because it implies the wrong yeah, thing. I mean, okay, master. And don't even start with Lassie's what you call master. a cigarette. How about that, master? Lassie's master. I would say yeah. hit you were his plucky companion. That'll work. Right. That'll work. Yeah, right. we did. You all were kinds Timmy of on Lassie. Yes. You fell in the well. Yes. Yes. Didn't happen. I, I know, was not the sharpest tool in the shed. You were it, young. You just yes. don't remember. It was a traumatic event when you were young. Off cliffs, into abandoned mine shafts, right. into culverts, you name it. Quicksand. I fell you in quicksand. quicksand you know, which but never a well. Never fell in a well. Never did. And we, everybody says it. We don't know where it came from, that catchphrase. But I'll take it. It's, uh, what do they call that? It's, it's called the uh, something effect. Don't know. The well effect? Livingston knows. It's called the Mandela effect. The Mandela. Didn't know that. You should Google it. I know Ma- Have Nelson you tried Google? Mandela, but I don't know Have you the tried Mandela Google? effect. Yes, I know that. Oh, I can try. It's a useful tool. Now, if Lassie was here with me, Lassie would figure it all out. Because no, that's because she's a dog did. and she does not speak. So perhaps she would figure it out in her mind, but she could not relay the information mm-hmm. Lassie to you. Lassie barked and we understood everything Lassie said. Oh, that's right. She had mm-hmm. that special, it was like that's Morris right. code, right? That was it. We'd run home. I'd be stuck somewhere, not in a well. Right. Lassie would go home, bark. Right. And, you know, June Lockhart, who played my mother, she would say, what is it, Lassie? Oh, Timmy's stuck over in the, the orchard. You know, and that's what I need to contest be. this 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 theory of yours because Lassie comes home without Timmy, right? There is the information she needs, and she barks and runs off to where and Timmy is. And everybody follows. And that's off. it. There's no need for like explanations. Okay. Right. June Lockhart is not going to stand there and go, "Is he in trouble or not?" Lassie, tell me in code. And right. Lassie. Lassie barks. And it runs. worked. Right. It right. worked. Right. All right, well, there's no last scene in this movie, but I think we need to get back to it. They need a dog for help. They do, they do. Or, like, a giant thing that eats crabs. That would but work. But it's got to be giant. That would work. All right, let's get back to the film. And when we come back, uh, I want to talk to you about your life in Bodega Bay and how that's going. It's Sounds a recent, like a plan. He's a, he's a recent citizen of Bodega Bay like yeah. us, so I want to know his opinion after living here for several years now, right? That's right. All right. All right. Off we go back to Attack of the Crab Monster, and uh, we're going to do some mail first, and then we'll talk to John. See you soon. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, we're watching Attack of the Crab Monsters with Mr. John Provost. But first, we need to do some mail from you because you send us mail, and if we don't read it, it would be rather rude, would it not? Quite. Quite. And uh, he's I still love here. The Where's Tangella? She's indisposed at the moment. Indisposed at the moment. Well, let's just do some mail, and perhaps she'll join us later. What do you got, Mr. Livingston? From Iran, it looks like. From Virginia Ritchie, Youngstown, Ohio. She says, hi, Vincent and Livingston and Tangella and John. I watch your show every night on YouTube. Yeah, I don't know how they do that. Every night. Computers. Everybody. No, no, no. But I mean, as a person who has a life, where they find time to watch us every night. I think Tangella is so cool on the show. I got a movie you can play babysitter with William Shatner and Elizabeth. Whoa. Oh, no. Well, that uh, hit and run accident was Tangella correcting her uh, seating arrangement. You know, he's, he's a guest tonight. You cannot abuse his life as you normally do. You know, she harasses that poor man all the time. It's her hobby, actually. It is, it is. All right, I, we're reading a letter from Virginia in Youngstown, Ohio. Behave yourself. Uh, she goes, I think Tangela is so cool on the show. I've got a movie you could play called Babysitter. I never heard of this. It stars William Shatner and Elizabeth Montgomery. And also The Bat with Vincent Price. We've done The Bat a zillion times, right? 
Two. Two times. So if you go on YouTube, which is where I think you watch us, uh, you can find the episodes we've done with the bat. And we'll look into this baby. Have you heard of a film called Babysitter? I have not, but we'll check into it. No, it sounds nice. William Shatner and Elizabeth Montgomery. Captain Kirk and, and, and Bewitched. That could be fun. Samantha Stevens. Samantha Stevens. Next up, Mr. Livingston. We have a letter. If you're looking for gifts, you're not going to find any here tonight. Look, okay, all he's got is, is paper. There's no boxes. I think you abused John Provost for no reason. All right, this is what appears to be a nicely handwritten note in cursive. I don't know how many of you can still read cursive or have ever been able to, but uh, no. No, I know you do, but I'm talking about them. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lost art. It's like, who's going to read the Declaration of Independence one day? Good question. All right. All right. Dear Vincent Tangela and Mr. Livingston, I accidentally found your show while randomly searching for something. Yeah, that's the story of our life. We're randomly found. Uh, I've been binge watching ever since. Some shows are good. Some are better with the sound off. Well, you know, you can watch anything she does with the sound off. Uh, may I request an autographed picture of the three of you? And finally, may I say that I have a major crush on Vincent? He's absolutely cute. Sincerely, Linda. My goodness. You know, you don't want anything to do with a guy like me because I'm trouble. That's Indeed. What, no, that's what she says. She says I make women miserable. So, right? I have nothing to no, add to that. You've got some to say. And then what was the other thing? Um, uh, the autograph, of course. We will send you an autograph uh, tomorrow. Wait, tomorrow's Sunday. Nobody, nobody's going to send an autograph on Sunday. We'll send you an autograph on Monday, Linda, and thank you for the kind words. Well, we can mail it. Well, of course, but we're not going to mail it till Monday, right? We can put it in the mailbox. Oh, my goodness. I know how the process works, sir. All right, here's a short one from Desiree Poussard in Sydney, Maine. Poussard, that's a French name, is it not? It is. I wonder if she speaks it. Hi, Vincent, Van Dahl, Tangella, and Mr. Livingston. Me and my mom recently stomped upon your show. Stomped. An interesting way of putting that. Right. On YouTube, keep up the good work, Desiree. Uh, you know, I wonder if she's like a young... Talks about it her sounds mom. like a young person. Yeah, maybe, maybe she's a young lady. Anyways, thank you for watching, and thank your mom for watching. And be nice to your mom. Another letter. She went through a lot of pain for you. I know mine did. All right, this one's from Biok. It says Biok. Is that rain? Or block. My yes, it, it does rain here, you know. No, it's raining hard tonight. All right, let's see what we've got. Oh, a nice card. It's a Christmas card. Christmas is over, but we're late on our mail. Oh, what's this? A $50 Visa gift card. No, she, hang on, let's find out who it's for. Maybe it's not for you, maybe it's for me. She just wants to read it. All right, so the card has been uh, altered a bit. There's spider webs on the Christmas card. And it says on the inside, and best wishes for a happy new year, merry, scary Christmas, and a happy new year. All right, what do we got? This is from... Dan and Kelly Block. Uh, hello, Creature Feature people. Uh, him and I are people, huh? I don't know. She's she's a different kind of people. She's a monstrous. She's a little monster. Uh, I doctored up this card just for you. Job well done. Uh, Vincent, you are the bomb. One of the all-time best spooky movie hosts ever. Oh, this is my night. Did you plan this? So of I course. get all the, all the love letters in one night. Uh... Mr. Livingston's beard is meticulously, perfectly groomed. That's, that's why he chose this letter. Come on, give us a smile, sir. Yeah, that's a smile. Uh, Tangela is delightful and very pretty and downright dangerous at times, most likely. You have no idea. Just ask John Provost. Uh, we really liked a recent movie called Daimajin. That's one we ran, and that is... Uh, oh, yeah, you didn't like that film. I liked it. We are enclosing a $50 Visa card for you. Hope it helps with your finances. Carry on with the awesome high caliber show you are. All the best, Dan and Kelly Block. P.S. We'd love an autographed picture if possible. It will be on its way Monday as well. Right? Right. Any more? One more? 
One more. One more piece of mail. We're doing a lot tonight because they're all short. And the movie's short. All right, this is the longest one from Andrew and Catherine. They say happy Christmas to Vincent Tangelo and Mr. Livingston. Again, we're a bit late. I know Christmas was some time back. But, you know, this stuff comes in and it takes a, a bit of time to process it, right? It does. That's, that's the I problem. I have lots of other things to do. Well, so he says. All right, we're sending our greetings from Nairobi, Kenya. Yes, Creature Features also has regular viewers in Africa. Is, is Kenya in South Africa? Kenya is, is in South East Africa. Southeast Africa. Because we've got that station in South Africa, right? Cape Town. Cape Town. We have a station in Cape Town that carries our show, but somehow they're watching us in Nairobi. How do you think they're doing that? How about the internet? Oh, they have the internet in Nairobi, of course. It's been there for quite some time. Quite. Right. 1973 was a great year for cult movies. Three masterpieces jump immediately to mind. Westworld, Soylent Green, and The Wicker Man, starring Ed Wood Wood Wood. Is Ed Wood 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 in that one? Ed Wood. No, Wood. they say Ed Wood Wood Wood. It might be an echo. Oh, all right. Is there any chance Creature Feature might be able to indulge us with such lavish spectacles? Enjoy the festivities, Andrew and Catherine. All right, let's go over these movies. Westworld's. Most doubtful. Most doubtful. No, that, that's like, well, they just made a series about it, so it's all, like, fresh again. We can only show moldy stuff. That's, that's the rule. Uh, Soylent Green, we've tried to get that one. They said no. No way. Emphatically. Emphatically. Uh, the Wicker Man, we'll look into that one. That one is, I, you know, I don't know if our viewers are going to like The Wicker Man. It's an odd film. It's not a bad film. It's just an odd film. So uh, we'll look in these again. Why not? You're in Nairobi, so we probably need to send you some better entertainment than lions and tigers and crocodiles, oh my. And right. that was that. And that's it. All right, if you'd like to send us mail of your own by email, send it to the address you see over here. Or if you'd like to send a card with a nice gift card inside, send it to the postal address you see right here. We'll be back soon with John, hopefully... She didn't damage him too much. But first, let's get back to Attack of the Crab Monsters. I knew she was going to do that. She always does. <laughs> Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Despite my previous protestation, I see a few of you have still not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Please, I implore of you to do so. Thank you. Looks like she did quite a number on you. Yeah, she's. I think she's known for this. Well, you know? you know, what's nice about her, sometimes she becomes nurse-like. I can see she gave you one of her good bandages. <laughs> yeah, but she, like, slammed it on my oh, head. I know. Well, you know, I, I don't think she's bad. I think she's just somewhat confused on, on how to convey niceness. She's really confused. Oh, all yeah. right, all right. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, I'm with John Provost. Formerly Timmy on Lassie, but now he's outgrown the role. Yes. However, uh, we are watching Attack of the Crab Monsters, and we just saw what appears to be ghosts, or we heard ghosts. Ghostly people, which uh, are the previous research team. They're all gone. They're all They're dead. 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 You know what happens. You're not going to tell me, though, because that would be a spoiler. Uh, don't yeah. tell them. I wouldn't would dare. would spoil the film for them. All right, so anyways, we're going to get back to the movie in a moment, but uh, when we left off with you, we were going to discuss your life here in Bodega Bay. He yes. lives in Bodega Bay right down the road, not far from here. In fact, he owed like a, almost like a stone's throw. 
Yeah, not that sense. far. Uh, and, you know, I love Bodega Bay. What do you love about Bodega Bay? Oh, well, the scenery, the seafood. I mean, they have crab, not this crab. You know, it's fresh. Good, fresh crab, fresh, fresh salmon. Then, you know, and, and like just the ambiance, just no, the it's bay. Fun. It's, it's fun. beautiful. And it always smells like the sea. Yes. Right. Yes. No, and great, have that. great sunsets. You don't, you don't get that in Santa Rosa where you used to live, right? No. There's no sea smell no. in Santa Rosa. No. But sometimes during low tide, it's too much, eh? It gets a little fishy. Right. Yeah. A little fishy. A little fishy. Right. But so, enjoy what it. do you not like about living in Bodega Bay? Well, on the weekends, we get a lot of tourists. Oh, and yes. they can, you know, they 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 don't look out for stuff, you know. They think you well, see them or whatever. No, they're they're sightseeing. Yeah. And if you're so, not in their sight, they don't see you. And every once in a while, somebody's looking for you, and they knock on my door, and I oh, have to say no. no. He's up the road a little ways. You know, I think we have to make you a sign saying, "No, Vincent here." That I think that would be excellent. Probably solve, excellent. solve excellent. the problem, yeah. right, right? That would be good. That would yeah, be good. Yeah. Well, you know, we've gone out of our way to keep the place hidden because... With the trees you planted and stuff, it's good. With the trees it's we planted good. and everything. But it's not because I don't want to see these people. It's because I, I'm frightened at what Tangela might do to an unsuspecting tourist. <laughs> well, you did ask me what I don't like about Bodega Bay. Right. Number one, Tangela. Oh, yeah. You know, I've heard that from others as well. Well, look. No, no. Well, you know? the mayor of Bodega Bay was going to do a Tangela Day, but it's not like the honorary type. It's the opposite. where It's like, don't like <laughs> Tangela on this day of the year. Negative. No. Yes. She yes, causes some sure. trouble downtown. And again, it's, it's not, I don't think she's doing it to be mean. I, I think she's just not quite up to speed on how to properly treat tourists no, and, she, and the citizens yeah. of Bodega Bay. She has Could issues. Be. And uh, sure. I understand she's giving you some trouble with her trebuchet. Oh. Well, you've, do you know what she's sent? I, you know, I was wondering what... In, the thing is gigantic. I hope she's not, like, launching automobiles oh. down towards you. Oh, like an old refrigerator, a oh. cow manure, and a, a coffin, an empty old dug-up coffin. Oh, you know, I, I, mean, no, I remember that one. So she dug yeah. that one up. She was going to use it as a piece of furniture in her chamber, and uh, she decided it was not the right color. Yeah, she'd probably no, sleep she in said, it. No, she said she said she's going to go put it back. Yeah, she didn't. So unless it came out of your yard, which I imagine it did not. No, I don't. No. Not in my yard. Right, right. No. All right. Well. All right. Well, what do you say we get back to this movie? Sounds like a plan. All right. Off we go. Back to Attack of the Crab Monsters, 1957. And uh, we'll be back with John Provost afterwards. See you soon. Hello, this is Robin from Tampa, Florida. I just started watching your show, and I want you to know how much I enjoy it. And I thank you so much for the wonderful gems. The old horror movies that I remember watching in the 70s and 80s. It's really nice to see these movies again. I also send my love to Mr. Vincent, Miss Tangela, and Mr. Livingston. Take care. Bye-bye. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're with the wonderful John Provost, who is uh, slightly wounded by you know whom. And we're watching Attack of the Crab Monsters, 1957. Not a bad movie. Do you know that the budget for this film was only $70,000? 
Wow, that's nothing. No. Well, back then, maybe. Well, even back then, I mean, if you times it by five, it's still a low-budget film, right? They got Russell Johnson pretty cheap. No, well, that's because he hadn't done Gilligan's Island yet. Had they made this film in 1967, Russell Johnson would have charged much, much more, I think, because he was famous. True. But then again, he was out of a job probably too as well, right? Probably, yeah, so who knows? Waiting for the minnow. All right. All right, enough about the film. We'll get back to it soon. Last time I saw you on the big screen was for a certain documentation documentary and uh, done by our director called Up Late with Bob Wilkins. How'd you get yes. into that? Well, um, I mean, growing up, uh, going to college in the Bay Area, I right. kind of grew up with Bob Wilkins. Well, not with him. Well, but on TV. I'm... Tracy the Plumber, what are you doing here? We've got a problem in the third floor bathroom. I'm missing a float for the toilet. Missing a toilet float. That's something Tangella would steal. Exactly. So why don't you ask her? Uh, she says that John has it. Why would John have it? And he has it in his pants. John, do you have a toilet float in your pants? Not that I know of. Well, you know, Tangella can be a little sneaky sometimes. Oh, found it. What? Thank you. You know, it's a good thing we have a plumber that makes house calls. Well, I don't know about no, that. No, you know, Andrew, he's, he's no good with plumbing. No, he's, well, he's good with electrical and wood. But, uh, he, wood's he's good, a, but no, no, so. I don't know about this. Ta I'm, it's Tangella. No, she, no. I, I think she did it as, it was like a gift. She's, <laughs> No, well, it, was a, it was a nice gesture. It was a beau jest. Not, no? it wasn't a nice gesture. Well, you know, it's better than a refrigerator in your front lawn shot well, this, by a trebuchet. This is true. This is mm, true. All right, good. Anyways, uh, we were talking about the documentary. Yes. Update well, with Bob Wilkins. So you used to watch Bob Wilkins when you were a college. Yes, yes. We always did. You know, with the guys, we'd get together so and watch Bob Wilkins. You were at and laugh. university and you would turn on Channel 2 and you'd see Bob Wilkins. Yes, doing Bay Area, this. Channel 2, Bob right. Wilkins up late at night. And, you know, it was the same thing. He, sh he showed these great movies like you do. Um, I'm kind of joking when I say they're great right. movies. Right. Uh, but, uh, I mean, come on. He's a Bay Area legend. No, he was. He yeah. was. No, we miss him. You know, he would be doing the show if he was still alive. And yes. I would maybe be a guest and he would be talking to me about rock and roll. There you go. And he wouldn't be talking there to me go. about the Lassie show because I couldn't tell him anything about it because <laughs> I can tell what I know from you, but that's, that's a bit of a, a time Well, there's always there. reruns. You know. Oh, there are reruns. Yeah. All right. What do you say we get back to this film? The giant crab sounds good to me. We are going to see some giant crabs. So don't go away. We'll be back uh, soon. Bye. <laughs> Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I got a box here with your name on it, Tangela. Just what she needs, another knife.
You know, I think you should get your hair colored like mine. No. Well, I've always been kind of light colored. No, I it know, might but be if you went black, then you could fill in for me sometime, right? I'd have yeah. to grow my hair longer. That's true. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, I, I don't even know why you're here. You should be watching the farm report or something because you're late. You missed all the good stuff in the movie, including the fact that we've established these crabs have eaten the prior research team. Now, my question to you is, do you suppose they put on those plastic bibs like humans do when they eat crab? <laughs> Maybe. It's possible. No, it's possible. But all the psychic stuff. You know, this is an interesting film. It's there's, not bad. There's, there's multiple layers to this film that aren't in most... I think they kind of made it up as they were going along. Oh, you think so? Yeah, All right. I think that. Yeah, all right. Well, you know, I'm not a writer of, of screenplays for film, no. so I don't know these things, but I will take your word because you've been around lots of things in Hollywood, and you've had a long career, and I want to know what is the strangest thing that's ever happened to you in television or movies? <laughs> well, what happened to me right here tonight? I have never had a float a toilet float pulled out of my pants on live television well, no so and you've never had one inserted the no other, no I no presume. and it's right. you know right. I all right well besides tangella. the tangella antics what, what else have, has happened well uh when i was filming the lassie series uh we had a scene where lassie and i were in a river and we got thrown into the rapids right and they couldn't rehearse it and they had to use real people they had to use us couldn't use doubles, be, and they didn't have CGI back then. Right. And I almost drowned. And you they, almost died playing I Timmy. Almost died, and but the the great part was, I was you know drowning, but that's what I was supposed to be doing, acting. So the director and everybody thought right. I was acting, but I wasn't. I was oh, really about to die. Oh, they didn't know. No, and then luckily oh. a stunt man saw what was happening and he figured it out and he jumped in the river. So if we watch me. that episode, oh, are we going to see, see the acting part or are we going to see the real life? No, you see the John real. Provost. You see fear. You see real fear. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 What's the name of and the episode? I was only like, you know, 13 years old. What's the name of the episode? I'm going to watch it tonight. It's called um, Lassie's Great Adventure. Lassie's great. They're yeah. all great adventures. Well, you know, and also it was the only thing we ever did in color. Everything was black Oh, it's a and color white. episode. Oh, yeah. They made it. It's Why a movie. Why was this one special? It's oh. a movie. Just, can just, what is that? Netflix or whatever. You just, it's there. Oh. Lassie's great adventure. I'm yeah. going to watch this tonight. And you fall in a river. And, and so Lassie sure. was okay, right? Well, they had people to save Lassie, not me. I was, I was going to say that'd be very sad if Lassie drowned. I think it would be very sad if no, I died. It's easy to replace Timmy. How oh. do you replace Lassie? A talking dog. Okay. Well, yeah. I, right? The I, no smalls code. Be, yeah. We could do it. Yeah, but, you know, but me, I mean, I mean. A little boys are a dime a dozen in, in Hollywood, right? Maybe back then, yeah. Oh, right. No, right. No, no. No, you're irreplaceable. No, no, no. I yeah. just. Thank you. I just. I, no, he's irreplaceable. Even now. No, no, well, no. Thank you. Well, Thank you've you. got so much history of this industry in your mind. Well, no, I, you should I write a book. a lot of time. In, well, as a matter of fact, I, it's, you, we've this well thing. Well, I do have a book. It's right. called uh, The John Provost Story, Timmy's in the Well. Oh, see, it, what yeah. did happen? But it never really did happen, no. but everybody thought it happened, so that's the title of the book, Timmy's in the Well. Well, you know, let me tell you this. One day, Tangelo's going to throw you down a well, and you're never going to be able to say this again. True story. I know <laughs> she wants to throw you down a well because of the story you and tell. And if I can, if I don't move, I bet it happens. Right. No, I wouldn't blame you if you did move. All right, what do you say we finish up this film? Sounds like a plan. All right, heading to the end of Attack of the Crab Monsters. You don't want to miss the end, and when the credits roll up, you don't want to go away because him and I will be here with Tangela, and hopefully she'll be apologizing for all the terrible things she's done to him tonight. Unlikely. I doubt it. See you on the other side.
I imagine you are becoming almost as tired of seeing me as I am of making these messages. Please subscribe. And so ends Attack of the Crab Monsters. I, I like the way Russell Johnson just ninjaed that. He saved everybody. Power thing, yeah. you know? Well, so how does he end up on Gilligan's Island if he's dead? He's not dead. Hollywood, it's all illusion. Oh, yeah. no, right, no. It's bad script writing is what it is. There's no Hollywood magic, no such thing. Anyways, uh, how are you doing? Are you still cross with our viewers for not subscribing? She's mad because so many of our viewers watch on YouTube, yet they don't subscribe. Only 8% hmm. of our viewers are subscribed. So, no, they, they promise you, you'll do better, right? Our YouTube viewers, you'll do better, you'll subscribe, and, right? You'll, you'll cheer up, cheer up, young lass. She stresses over things sometimes. Yeah, I, I think so. I know so. she didn't watch the movie because she's too busy disassembling the third floor loo. Anyways, yeah. so uh, what do you got going on? What's your website? We never said your website. It is just my name, johnprovost.com. Johnprovost.com. Right and, and yes, and, and my book will be there, and your they book? can get that, and so find out where I'm can at. They, can shows, they buy different, John different Provost t-shirts? Do you have a John Provost? We, we do, we did. Do you yeah. have a John Provost t-shirt? Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. I, I would wear a John Provost t-shirt. Well, I maybe, mean, not in public. Maybe next, come down to the house and I'll, I'll give you one. What size? I, you know, these days I don't know. Okay, well, just come down to the house. I'll try them all yeah. on. I'll try, okay. I'll, I'll start small and work my way up. Don't to, bring her. You know, she's, she, she, you better be careful what you say in front of her because she will send you a gift via airmail and you know how she does it. I knew nothing about trebuchets until she built one. Now I, now I know why the French won so many battles in, during the Middle Ages. That's quite a, quite a weapon. All right, well, anyways, thank you, John. It was so nice for you to come. Thank and you. Uh, next time uh, we're short on a guest, we're going to call you again. Okay, I'm close. There we go. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching our program. We know you could have been doing something more fun than doing this, but you stuck with us tonight. And for that reason, we love you. We'll see you next week. Different movie, different guest. See you next time. So uh, anyways, John, I understand we're going to be at the same convention soon. Uh, got anything to add about that? Oh, sure. I'm going to be there, but I'm going to be at the other end of the convention hall because of you-know-who. Cheat.